My name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. I love talking about all things fabric and sewing and patterns. Um, I always film a Sunday sewing catch up and that comes out on a Sunday and then I also release a video on a Wednesday which is usually a fabric haul. I might talk about makes from that month. I might have um, a tutorial. I don't tend to do tutorials as often. Um, but I might have that. I do unboxing videos. So if that sounds like something interesting to you, then please do make sure that you've hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified when I bring out my next video. So I'm back today with one of my Sunday sewing catch ups and we're on episode 38. I am very tired today. I've had a really busy week. Um, I think I said last weekend that it was going to be quite busy this week. So we had two weeks of these holidays and then I've gone back to work. I'm a teacher if you're new. Um, I teach in the early years. Um, and we just started the summer term. So I've had four days of work because it was bank holiday Monday on Monday. Um, the, the start of a term is always really busy because you're getting the children back into a routine. They're always really chatty because they want to share their adventures with you. And they were all talking about Easter and how many chocolate eggs they got because Easter had just happened, which is lovely. But it's getting them back into that routine. Then I had a couple of friends with children that had birthdays. So I often like to make birthday cakes for um, my friend's children. Um, and it just so happened that I had four friends that had either children or grandchildren um, celebrating their birthdays. So I made them all birthday cakes. That meant I had four cakes to do. So I've got a really bad habit of saying yes and um, not really thinking about what that actually means when I've got a week of work and then I've got cakes to do in the evening. Um, but I'm always really happy to do it. Um, I volunteered to do it. Um, and the children were really excited when they saw their cakes too. They were only little cakes. So I'll put some pictures in just in case you're interested in seeing those. And then we had a lovely um, St. J St. George's Day um, event, which was a community event that I was at all day yesterday. So it was super busy. This is my fourth attempt at filming my Sunday sewing catch up. The rest of them were all super rambly, which I think this one is going to turn out to be as well. So apologies now because I am feeling very tired, but hopefully I can get through this video with out rambling too much. Um, anyway, welcome back. Um, I'll let you know what I'm wearing and then I've got a usual mix of things that I like to cover in these videos. So I'm wearing a recent make, it's the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl Cardigan, but I've hacked it into a maxi dress with lots of ruffles. So I've got ruffles going down the front bodice and the back bodice over the shoulder. So I've got ruffle there and the other side. And then the Pearl Cardigan by Tilly and the Buttons is a wrap cardigan. So this is a wrap maxi dress and I've just added um, two front skirt panels, a back skirt, and then a ruffle on the bottom to turn it into a maxi length uh, dress. I'll put pictures in and videos, but that is the ruffle. It's really comfortable to wear. Um, it's typical spring weather out today where it's sunny, but when the sun goes away, it's really cold. Um, and I've been running lots of errands, um, going shopping for various things. So this has been perfect. It's been super comfortable. Um, I had to go round a couple of bookshops to find a book that we're studying next week that we're doing with the children. Um, and then I also had to go and find some washing powder. So usually our brand of washing powder, um, we have to use a certain type because I've said this before, but my daughter's um, autistic, my eldest daughter, and she only likes a certain type of washing powder. So I went to four supermarkets before I could find the one that we use. And it's quite a popular washing powder, but for whatever reason, I couldn't find it in the other supermarkets, but I've managed to get some. So um, today I've got usual mixture of all the different things that I like to cover in these videos. So I've got some sewing things that I've been getting up to. Um, I have got a few makes. I wasn't sure if I'd have any for this video because it's, it's been such a busy week. But I did do lots of sewing prep and I've also been able to sew some really cute baby clothes which I'll share with you. I've got some fabric from my stash because I haven't been buying fabric recently. But I've got a couple of pieces of fabric that have sat in my stash for a while and I'd really love your help with them. I'm going to talk about the baby patterns that I've used um, and then I've got a YouTube channel to talk to you about as well. So let's dive in with things that I've been sewing. So last weekend I talked about my Piccadilly pyjamas which is a Nina Lee pattern and I'd almost finished them. I needed to do buttonholes and buttons and I needed to finish the trousers and I'm really pleased to say that I've managed to get them finished. I haven't actually got photos of me wearing these pyjamas because 
I normally take my photos outside, um, but there's something a bit strange, it just feels a bit strange wearing my pyjamas and going outside for some photos. So I haven't got pictures, but I might be able to take photos of like a flat lay of the pyjamas so I can put them in. But I'll hold them up so you can see what they look like. And then I'll show you the pattern as well, just in case you're not familiar with the pattern. Okay, this is the pattern that I use. So it's a Nina Lee pattern and it's the Piccadilly pyjamas. You can do three quarter length trousers and a shirt, or you can do shorts and a capped sleeve shirt. Um, I don't like long sleeves. I tend to roll them up. So I've done the cap sleeve shirt and then I've done the three quarter length trousers and they're really gorgeous. It's such a lovely pattern with some really beautiful details. So it says the Piccadilly pyjamas are a chic sleepwear set with oriental accents, a soft and open mandarin collar and gently curving hems. And that is something that I absolutely love about this pattern. Those gently curving hems are just beautiful. And I decided the pattern recommends that you finish the curves with um, bias binding, but I wanted to try piping. So that's how I finished my pyjamas. Um, it comes in sizes UK 6 to 20. So for a UK 6, it's a 32 inch bust, 24 inch waist and a 33 and a half inch hip measurement. And then a UK 20 is a 46 inch bust, 38 inch waist and a 47 and a half inch hip. I went for an eight because I went off my bust and I went off my hip measurement. I'm a 34 inch bust and the bust measurement for an eight is a 34 and I'm a 35 inch hip and the hip measurement for an eight is a 35 and a half inch hip. In terms of fabrics, they recommend soft, lightweight fabrics that will feel good against your skin, like a cotton lawn, a rayon and a silk satin. And I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. So I'll hold up the shirt first and then I'll share the trousers with you. But here is the shirt. It's so pretty. I just love that rifle paper um, fabric. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And I love that mint colorway as well. So you can see on the cap sleeves that I finished them with piping. You've got that lovely soft mandarin collar. And then I decided to finish my pajamas with a slowly does it label with a sloth, which is super cute from uh, Pink Coat Club, although Joy doesn't do um, labels anymore. Um, so that's the cap sleeve on the other side. The buttons, I went for these sort of vintagey um, buttons that I got from Rainbow Fabrics that they sent with some fabric. And then you've got that gorgeous curve at the bottom and you've got the beautiful curves on the side as well. And I finished them with bias, uh, not bias, I finished them with piping and I used my invisible zipper foot to finish the piping. So I ended up with a really neat finish. The shirt has got pockets and I said last weekend the pockets with the piping wasn't quite as neat. You can see there's a bit showing it wasn't quite to the edge of the fabric and that's because I just used my normal zipper foot for the pockets but then I wasn't quite happy with that finish so I thought maybe the invisible zipper foot would give a much better finish and it really does it's really neat on the end so I'm really pleased with that so that is the shirt and it's really comfortable to wear as well this rifle paper fabric is from the primavera collection and I managed to get the mint colorway and then I got the teal colorway and I could just really see those two fabrics going together really well. And then these are the trousers and I wanted to draw on the mint color of this fabric with the ribbon. So I went with a mint ribbon for the trousers and the trousers have got an elastic bit in the back and then they've got a ribbon at the front and then the ribbon just pulls the trousers in ever so slightly. Um, I'm really pleased with the finish of them as well and it was a really great pattern to sew up. So if you haven't sewn it, um, I would definitely recommend it as a pattern for pyjamas. Um, really straightforward, Nina's pattern instructions are always really detailed as well. And I just really loved the details on the pyjama bottoms as well with that gorgeous curve on the trousers. Um, and yeah, I just think that the, they both work really nicely together, the shirt and the trousers with that Primavera rifle paper pattern fabric so I'm really really thrilled that I did manage to get those pajamas finished they'd almost all been completed and um, I just needed to do buttonholes buttons and finish the trousers the trousers didn't have a waistband on and I had to do the buttonhole on the front of the trousers to allow for that ribbon to go through so I'm really pleased pajamas done and then that is another fabric and another make from my make nine as well and i've actually filmed an update on my make nine um which will be coming out on wednesday just letting you know what things i've sewn from my make nine list and what things i've still got to sew and that's kind of what's inspired me to get a couple of pieces of fabric out from my stash today to talk to you because i've nearly finished my make nine i think i've got two pieces of fabric 
left on my make nine um to sew up one of them is definitely going to be an autumn winter make because i just don't think i'll get a wear out of it. it's a wool fabric and i just think it's too warm for spring summer and then the other one i'm not quite sure what to do with it so on that video that comes out on wednesday i am asking for your help with that actually i've got three because i've got that lovely astronaut fabric that i've shared before as well anyway the other things that I've been doing sewing related, I've been sewing some baby clothes, which I'll share, but then I've also been doing some sewing prep. So I talked about in my last video last weekend that I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get any sewing done. So I was going to set myself some sewing prep. So I had a couple of patterns to trace off. The Megan Nielsen Hevea jacket. I think I've got the pattern. Yes, it's here. So I've traced off this pattern and I was cutting it out using this gorgeous quilting fabric that I got from Fabric Revival. That's the pocket piece. So I've managed to trace off that pattern and I've cut out the pattern pieces and I have gone for View C, which is the longer length jacket. And then it's got the collar band that goes over it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but this is the version that I'm going for. So it's that longer length, but it's got the collar band that you can see on this version. And it's also got a belt as well. So I'm looking forward to um, sewing that up. I'll probably get a chance to sew that up next weekend because we've got a three day weekend because it's a bank holiday um and then i also i've traced off the pattern pieces for the i am irma shirt but i haven't cut it cut it out i'm going to use this fabric that i got from a so Hilly jane box it's just a cotton poplin and i'm really excited about getting this cut out so i've traced all the pattern pieces off I need to cut them out now. They're just on big sheets of tracing paper at the moment. And then I need to cut out the um, pieces. So that will be a job to do this week. And then next weekend, hopefully, I'll be able to get, or at least get started on my I Am Irma shirt, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, it's a pattern I've wanted to sew up for ages. And I think that fabric will work really nicely for that pattern too. And then I talked about possibly being able to sew up some baby clothes and I'm really pleased that I managed to get the baby clothes sewn up. I've just got a, a few little bits to do on them. I need to top stitch the um, neckband on a dress and the jumpers and then I need to hem quite a few pieces. Um, but I didn't have the correct thread in my stash and because it's a gift, I don't want to use a thread that isn't quite the correct colour, so I've ordered some sage green thread and hopefully that'll arrive this week so I can just finish those off and get them sent off. They're for two friends. I've got a friend who's just had a little girl and I've got a friend who's on maternity leave at the moment but she hasn't had her little boy yet. So I'm going to hold fire, obviously sending them to her or wait for her to have the baby and then I'll send them. But I decided to go with three to six months because I thought um, my friend who's had the little girl, she is about eight weeks old so I thought if I do three to six months then they'll get a bit of wear out of them in the spring summer so I'll just grab my stack of baby clothes they're really cute I love sewing for babies comes together really quickly but they're also really cute to look at so here is my stash of baby clothes I did doubles of things apart from the pansy dress so the first one is these super cute, I don't know if I've got them the right way around, yeah I have, um, tangerine trousers, that's a poppy and jazz pattern. I'll go into more detail about the patterns once I've showed you the makes. Um, but they've got this really lovely, quite wide waistband, and then they're just like a leggings type. They look so tiny because they're three to six months. And then I just need to hem the trousers because um, I'm just waiting for the right thread to match um, that sort of sage green sweatshirting fabric. So I did two pairs of those and then I used a free pattern which is a Patterns by Pirates pattern called the Teeny Beanie. So it's this super cute hat. It comes in three different variations which I'll talk about when I've got the line drawings to show you but I went for the tie knot hat. Isn't that gorgeous? And that's three months and I made two of those as well. And then I used the Poppy and Jazz strawberry sweatshirt pattern to make two absolutely adorable jumpers. How cute is that? And that's three to six months. Look at the size of the cuff. It's so tiny. And the little neckband as well. And then that's got a hemband on the bottom as well. So that one's completely finished. I just want to top stitch the neckline. And then I'm going to insert a little label there. Um, so I did two of those as well. So that's another pair of the trousers. And another jumper and hat. And then I've got the pansy dress, which is a poppy and jazz pattern. And I've sewn this up before, the pansy dress, for another friend that's had a little girl. So it's got this gorgeous, cute little, almost cropped bodice, front and back, long sleeves. It's got a neckband, and then it's just got this really cute little skirt added on. 
and then I just need to hem the skirt and then I also need to hem the sleeves and I want to top stitch that neckband and then I also want to insert a label as well but it's just so cute and tiny I absolutely love it it's so fun sewing up baby clothes so onto the patterns that I've used and I've got another pattern to share with you as well so onto the patterns that I used I've got two of the patterns in front of me the other two I'll just put in pictures on it but I'll put pictures in um, but I'll, and I'll talk about the patterns as well so it's the teeny beanie um by patterns for pirates and you can do three different types you can do the tie knot one which I've done you can do the bear ears or you can just do the plain um hat and on the hat that I've done and all of the hats actually you get quite a deep hem band and then you just fold that hem band up on itself so it looks really cute um it comes in ages premature up to nine to 12 months and then those are the line drawings this is a free pattern that you can get from patterns for pirates and they've also got some free baby clothes patterns as well there's like a wee lap tee I think there's some trousers which are called like the petite pegs which I've sewn up as well before um, I'll link them down below if you haven't checked them out but they're patterns by pirates and they've got some really gorgeous patterns over on their website I would definitely recommend the teeny beanie especially if you're using up scraps of fabric it works really well when you've got little bits and pieces um, that you you want to use up in your stretch fabric the hat pattern you have to cut on the fold when I did the knot tie knot one you cut two pieces on the fold and that's the front and the back and then you've got a hem band as well it's a really great pattern so I definitely recommend that and then the poppy and jazz pattern this is the tangerine trousers and this comes in zero to 24 months and there's two versions that you can sew up you can either sew up a version that's got like the little feet on or you can do a version without let me see if I can find the lawn law let me see if I can find the line drawings to show you. So that version has got the little feet attachment uh, and you sew that onto the bottom and that version hasn't. I tend to go for this version because with this one, if your baby grows quickly and their legs get longer, there's only a certain amount of time that they can wear this version. But what I found when I've sewn for my nephew, he's four now, but when I've sewn these up for him when he was younger, um, if I did this version with no feet on the bottom and he grew, my sister would still put him in them. They would just be slightly cropped trousers, but they still worked perfectly. So it meant he got a lot more wear out of those. The um, tangerine trousers comes in ages 0 to 3 months, up to 18 to 24 months. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend lightweight knit fabrics like a cotton jersey, thin Ponty de Roma, French terry. And be sure to pick something with lots of stretch that has good recovery. These patterns are all aimed at beginners. So if you don't have any experience of sewing baby clothes, but you'd like to jump in and have a try, I would definitely recommend the Poppy and Jazz range and also the patterns for pirates. The Poppy and Jazz range, I would say, is a bit more straightforward than the like Wee Lap Tea, because the Wee Lap Tea's got like this little crossover bit. The Poppy and Jazz range is slightly more straightforward. And then you've got the pansy dress and the strawberry sweatshirt. The pansy dress comes in newborn to six years and they recommend cotton jersey, lightweight Ponte di Roma, French terry and sweatshirting. And then for the strawberry sweatshirt, it comes in newborn up to six years and the same uh, fabric recommendations, medium weight, cotton jersey, French terry, Ponte di Roma and sweatshirt knit. And again, quick and easy patterns, sew up really quickly and they're really straightforward to follow as well. So I definitely recommend them. So that's all of the things that I've been sewing up. I've just got a few little bits to finish with the baby clothes and then I can send one set off to my friend, the other one I'm gonna keep hold of. But then I've got another pattern from the Poppy and Jazz range, which I wanted to share with you because I'm hoping, I've already traced off the pattern. Um, with all of the Poppy and Jazz patterns, I bought the PDF pattern and I've stuck them together and I've tra I've decided to trace off the pattern because I know you know in the summer I want to make more clothes for my friends and gift them and then probably at Christmas time I want to make some clothes and gift them so I just thought it was easier to stick the pdf together and trace off so that when I come to make more I can just trace off the next size up and so on um the pdfs are only about 12 to 14 pages so it didn't take long to stick them together the next pattern i wanted to share is something that i'm definitely going to sew up for my friend's little girl and probably for my friend's little boy when he's born so that they can wear them in the summer but it's the raspberry romper by poppy and jazz and this comes in sizes or ages 0 to 24 months it's a really cute little romper pattern i'll see if i can show you the the line drawings here 
think it's absolutely gorgeous. I've seen some really beautiful versions on Instagram. I've seen a really cute gingham one, which I think would look so lovely. Um, so I'm looking forward to sewing that up. Um, in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend lightweight woven fabrics such as cotton lawn, cotton poplin, linen and broderie anglaise. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a try. I've had the pattern for ages, but I just haven't sewn it up. Um, but yeah, I've got this fabric that I got from um, Crafty Pinup when Abby was selling fabric. She doesn't sell fabric anymore, but I only got a metre of this. It's a really lovely, like lightweight cotton lawn, and I think it would work really nicely with the raspberry romper. It's got a really lovely amount of drape to it. Um, I think it would work so beautifully for that pattern. So I'm really looking forward to trying that. Because like I said, it's a pattern I've had in my stash for ages, and I've just never got around to sewing it up. Um, and it looks like it's going to be quite straightforward to sew up. And also, um, I'll get a really cute romper that I can gift as well. So I'm looking forward to that. I do love sewing baby clothes. I keep saying that, but I just love how quickly they come together. And I love how cute and tiny they are. Like the little cuffs on the strawberry jumper. They're just so cute and tiny. Um, it was a real joy to sew them up. So I'm really excited to be able to get them finished and sent off in the post. So I said that I've got two fabrics I wanted to share with you and I've got them here. They're from my stash. I bought them probably about a year ago, if not longer. So I don't think they'll be in stock anymore, but I would really love your suggestions. Um, they're both quite similar in terms of the colour. The first one is almost like a gingham type fabric. It's got quite a prominent stripe going down, but then if I hold it closer, it's got this like beige stripe going the other way. I think it's a seersucker because it's got that sort of crinkled texture to it. I can't remember, if I'm honest, what type of fabric it was, um, but it feels like a cotton like seersucker. I've got, I think, I've got about two and a half metres of this fabric and I think I got it from Lamarzi Fabrics. Um, I'd really love your suggestions on what to turn it into. I feel like it needs to be turned into something for the spring summer because those colours just feel like spring summer colours. Um, so that's the first one. And then the other fabric I think I got from Rainbow Fabrics and it feels like it's just a really light fabric. I'm not actually quite sure what type of fabric it is, but I've got three metres of this fabric. It's really lovely and lightweight. It's got a little bit more drape than the other fabric and it's super floaty. So I feel like this needs to be some kind of dress. Um, it's got stripes going across like that. Um, it's quite a lightweight fabric. Um, it's a little bit sheer actually. Um, so I'd love your thoughts on what to turn that one into. I love all of the colours in that fabric. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. But I have no idea what to turn it into. And I've got three metres of that fabric. Absolutely loads of fabric to play around with. So please do let me know in the comments below if you've got any suggestions for those fabrics. I think because I'm coming to the end of my Make 9 plans, I'm feeling really inspired to dig out some of those fabrics that I've had for a while. And those two fabrics, I just feel like because the summer's coming... I feel like they need to be turned into something for the summertime. So I'd really love your help with those fabrics. And then I just wanted to talk really briefly about my Me Made May plans and what my pledge is. Um, I've been thinking quite a lot recently because I knew Me Made May was coming up. If you're not sure what Me Made May is, it is a challenge that was set up by Sozo Blogs. I'll link her blog down below where you can go and find out even more about it. But I've mentioned it a few videos ago. Um, and it's sort of a challenge for us to um, think about our handmade wardrobe. You don't have to have lots and lots of handmade clothes in your wardrobe to take part. There's no prizes or anything like that. It's a personal challenge for yourself to help you sort of reflect on your relationship with your handmade clothes and how you sort of wear your handmade clothes. Um, I've used it in the past to look at what gaps I've got in my wardrobe. This time around, I just want to celebrate all of the handmade clothes that I've got. So I've decided every day I'm going to wear something different. And I'm going to look through my wardrobe for things that I haven't worn for a while. And that might be some of my summer clothes because it's been a little bit too chilly. But how can I um, sort of get the most out of those clothes that maybe when the weather's a bit chilly, I wouldn't necessarily reach for. But I'm going to think really carefully about how I can layer up those garments so that I get more wear out of them. So I'm going to try and dig out some of my old makes. I've got a terrible habit of when I've made something, I just want to keep wearing that because I get really excited about it being finished and I just love the last thing that I've made. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but the last item that I make, I absolutely love and I just want to keep wearing it. So I want to look through my wardrobe at some of those older makes that I still absolutely love, but I'm not reaching for. And it might be that I need to layer up. So I need a long sleeve top on underneath or I want to put a cardigan on over the top 
or have a go at playing around with wearing some of my jumpers with my dresses so it looks like I've got a skirt on. But I'm going to try and wear something different every day and try and wear some of those older makes and celebrate them in my handmade wardrobe. I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know what you're doing if you're taking part in Me Made Mate and what pledge you've got to yourself for that challenge. Um, I love hearing about everybody else and how they're approaching Me Made Mate, but I'm really looking forward to being inspired by all the amazing handmade clothes that get shared throughout the month of May um, with that challenge. Um, my sewing plans I've already talked about. I've got my Hevea jacket that I really want to get sewn up. I want to cut out the raspberry romper and get that sewn up. I want to finish the baby clothes. And then I also want to start sewing, if possible, the I Am Irma shirt dress. So lots of plans as usual. Um, I do like to be busy. I think that's one of my traits. I like having lots of things on the go. Um, so I'm really looking forward to next weekend having a little bit more time to get some sewing done. That's always really exciting and using some of those beautiful fabrics that I've got. And then the final thing I wanted to talk to you about was a YouTube channel that I've just discovered. And it's the lovely Elisa, who is my super, which is spelled S-E-W-P-E-R, power. Um, and I recently discovered Elisa because she put something on a Facebook post on the vlogger. Um, it's like a vlogger community over on Facebook that I'm part of. She put a post on there to say that she'd hit 100 subscribers, which is amazing. So congratulations to you, Elisa. Um, but she was also feeling a little bit sort of um, imposter syndrome. And I think that's something that a lot of us feel, whether you're a vlogger or blogger or whether you just share things over on Instagram, not just in the sewing community, but I know in lots of different communities. I think um, if you've got your own business or if you're sharing advice with people or just, you know, any time, I think there's a lot of us that can kind of resonate with that feeling. And I know I've certainly felt like that. Um, the, the interview that I had with the lovely Crystal, who is my social thread, I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it, I felt really quite self-conscious about that interview. I was quite open and honest in that interview as well, particularly around one of the reasons why I sew. And I talked quite openly about the fact that when I was a teenager, I was bullied quite heavily. I had quite a, quite a miserable time actually at secondary school. Um, and that really shaped who I was going into my adulthood. Um, it meant that I was incredibly shy. Um, I didn't really put myself out there at all. Um, I found social situations really difficult to manage and I used to wear a lot of really dark clothes. And it was only until five or six years ago when I really discovered sewing that I built up my confidence again and I really started to feel like this is who I am and, you know, I can really celebrate myself and, and sort of help boost my confidence I guess through the clothes that I wear and now I've got such a bright colourful wardrobe and I almost use that as a talking point when I'm going into a new room or you know I'm meeting new people I love that the clothes that I'm wearing help me feel a bit more confident in those social situations so I felt quite vulnerable with that interview um, and I just want to say thank you to everybody that's commented on that interview um, it was really kind of you to do that so I really resonated with Elisa when she was talking about feeling that that imposter syndrome because I think we've all been there we've all had that time and we'll continue to have that time but one of the wonderful things about the sewing community is how we all support each other um, and I've had a watch of some of Elisa's videos she's got a few on there so I'm working my way through them you know that I love discovering new vloggers on YouTube. I love having a video on in the background when I'm sewing. Um, and Lisa has got a really lovely um, sort of introduction welcome video on her channel, which I really enjoyed watching. And just listening to Elisa's sewing journey and how she got into sewing and how um, sewing has sort of allowed her to feel very much like herself and feel a bit more confident because she was finding with um, shop bought clothes that they just weren't fitting or they weren't making her feel good about herself. And I really resonated with what she was saying. Um, so if you haven't followed her, I'd really recommend going over to her YouTube channel and giving her a follow. She's called My Sopa Power. I'm just looking down to make sure that I've said it correctly, but it's my S-E-W-P-E-R, like super, but with so, power over on YouTube. I'll link her channel down below so you can head over and give her a little follow and watch some of her videos. 
Um, so that was everything that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for coming back again to watch one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups. I really appreciate having your support and all of your comments. If you haven't subscribed, it'd be really great if you could hit that subscribe button. Um, you'll get notified when I bring up my next video. And there's a video coming out on Wednesday, which is a uh, sort of a roundup of my um, Make Nine plans so far and asking for help with the last three fabrics. Um, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.